everybody, it's Michelle Caswell from Purely His. Uh, just getting ready for our Friday Night Live. My screen is kind of dark. I am going to brighten it. Sorry. Okay, much better. <laughs> Sorry about that for video purposes. Let's wait for a second for you guys to get on. Hey, Sandy. Nice to see you in your profile picture. <laughs> I think it's funny how we do those those posts on Facebook where it's like, oh, we'll see you tonight. <laughs> like, see you. Hey, Larry. Hey, Chris. Oh, <coughs> I sneeze. Sorry. I did I get something on my shirt? <laughs> Well, thanks guys for tuning in. I'm getting ready to go into a meeting here at six o'clock. So I just really wanted to get on here and share something that uh, the Lord put on my heart. It's funny because um, most of these Friday Night Lives like come from something I'm currently going through or something I recently went through. It's not usually something that I'm like, you know what the people need to hear. They need to hear this. I usually just use something that is specific you know, specifically happening in my life currently so that I can, um, yeah, just kind of share like how I overcome things or how I go about things. So hopefully, you know, when you come up against the same thing, you can use this piece of advice to kind of go forward and yeah, live your life in a, in a way that is, um, yeah, pleasing to the Lord, but it also makes it easier. So I love to like give people shortcuts. Hey, Chris, it says, I'm down the street if you're at the church. I am at the church. You see my white walls? <laughs> like super white. Hey, Amber, it's good to see you last night. Hey, Melissa, from up there in Forest Grove, Hillsboro area. I don't know where you live now, but I know it's up there. I actually have a girl here staying with me for a few days who is from Forest Grove. You might even know her. <laughs> hey, Amber. Yay. Cool. I got a lot of stuff going on this week that I am really excited about. And um, some of the things that are going on kind of brought up like an old topic for me. And it was something that um, I used to really put into practice. And once again, the Lord is like bringing that back up so that um, I can use it again because I'm in another season of using this tool, which I'm about to share with you guys in a second. Oh, you're in McMinnville now? I love McMinnville. I got a lot of friends up there. It's a really cute area. All right. Well, I, um, I'm i going to jump into what our topic is tonight. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited about it because it's currently something that is a tool from my past that I have used to make a lot of decisions. And it's a tool that I am currently using right now, like this week. So, um, so I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to scoot these uh, comments over to the side and feel free, like I say, you know, always is, is if there's something you want to comment on or ask a question or, you know, just share something, you know, a way that um, you are relating to what I'm talking about or whatever, just, um, just kind of go for it. But first I'm going to pray really fast because um, I have been running errands from one thing to the next to the next. Like I literally just pulled in the parking lot a few minutes ago and ran in, in here and set up my camera so that I could do this. And um, anyways, I want to switch gears from what I was just doing to what I'm doing now. So Lord Jesus, I just thank you for just allowing me the privilege of being able to speak to people without being right there in the room with them. I thank you for technology. I thank you for the Friday Night Lives. Um, I thank you for the people that are getting help you know, through it. And I just pray, God, that you would just use my mouth, that you would use my hands that I always talk with, that you just use my mind, use everything that I am right now. And I just pray that you would have your way. I pray that you would remind me of things that I want to talk about tonight and remind me of things that you want to talk about that I don't even know I'm about to say. So God, I just release you through me right now. And I just ask God that you would minister to your people in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So, um, what has been on my heart is, is the difference between, um, you know, looking at red lights in your life and looking at green lights in your life, you know, looking at signs and wonders as a way that God 
answers your prayers. So, you know, when you're going forward with huge decisions and you're asking God, like, I don't know which way to go. Do I go this way? Do I go that way? You know, it's important that we really listen for an answer and look for an answer. Sometimes the answers that we need are something that you can see, you know, um, whether it's, you know, a wrong way or a right way. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can look at that. You can go, you know, is this door open or is this door closed? You know, am I seeing green lights or am I seeing red lights? Like, am I seeing red flags in this situation? Or is it like, go, go, go. You know, it's just important to like use all of your senses when you're trying to make a big decision. So for instance, um, when I was dating Matt, when I first like started dating him or first started talking to him, you know, I had had a season of almost six years of, of purity, six years of serving the Lord, six years of no dating, no nothing. And I did not want to make the wrong choice because I made a lot of bad choices in my past. And so one of the things that I had done is I surrendered Matt and I surrendered marriage and dating all that stuff to the Lord. And um, so before I decided to go forward with Matt, I was, of course, totally praying about him. Like, I liked him. He was super cute and super nice and all that stuff. But I also knew that I had been fooled before. So I did certain things. Like, I got people up in my business, like accountability. I had him meet a bunch of different people. And I asked those people specifically, like, before they met him, like, I need you to really be praying. I need you to really look and see if there's anything wrong with this guy. And if there's anything weird, you need to tell me right away because then I will stop, you know, going forward. I won't commit to this guy because we weren't technically boyfriend and girlfriend yet. Um, and the other thing I was doing is I was praying and I was looking for open or closed doors. I was looking for red or green lights. And um, as you know, he met the different people, he met everyone within a two week period um, in person. And by the time he you know, was through the gauntlet after that two week period, um, I decided to go forward with him. And one of the things that I had told him is that, hey, I just want you to know I'm like really interested in you and I really hope that this whole thing like works out, but I'm, I'm looking for green lights. And so if I see a red light, if I see a red flag, I'm gonna stop. Like I don't, I'm not gonna settle this time. I, I really want God's perfect will for my life. I don't want anything less than that. And so I mean, I hope you're his perfect will, but if you're not, I gotta, I gotta get out of this thing. So anyways, as we would move forward, um, and another door would open or it would start to be like seamlessly. It's like, wow, this is, this is really happening. This is, this is easy. Um, I would look at him and be like, see, nothing but green lights, baby. And so even all the way to our wedding day, like um, when I came down, like in my wedding dress, uh, there was a little room off to the side before I actually saw him. And I went in there, it was like the waiting room. And on this whiteboard, he had written nothing but green lights, baby. And, and I really was paying attention to those things all the way through dating. So nine months of dating before we got married, I was looking for either red lights or green lights. And the whole time was green lights. It was very obvious that God was in it. And, um, but there's a lot of times that you can look back at my past or I can look at people that I've mentored who end up in a, end up like accidentally end up in this terrible relationship. And they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't believe like that he changed like that. I can't believe it, it got to this point or whatever. And I would ask them questions like, did you did you ever see any red flags? Did you ever notice anything weird in the beginning? Like, well, yeah, I did see the red flags, but I ignored them. You know, I did see the red flags, but I just thought he would change. And it's like red flags are to warn you that you are going the wrong way. Red flags are waving like, hey, you know, we're all like, I need a sign. And the Lord's like, there's a sign, there's a sign, there's a sign. Don't go forward. These are red flags. This is a red light. Um, but we, we want what we want. And so if you want what you want, you're going to get what you get. And so if you want what you want, it's most likely going to be, you know, like half of God's perfect will. It's going to be a quarter of God's perfect will. It's not going to be what he really, really has for you, but you can have it because you have free will. And so it's like, we have to be so careful, like as we're moving forward in relationships, whether those relationships are personal, like, like boyfriend, girlfriend, or becoming, you know, going to get married, whatever, or if it's in business dealings, or if it's in like a certain house that you're going to buy. So another one of my stories with Matt is um, when we were living in Medford, we knew that we wanted to get a place that had like one to five acres. And we wanted that place to be usable for animals, but also to be usable for, um, for ministry purposes. 
And long, long, long story short, we uh, we were looking all over Medford and everything was super duper expensive, like $400,000 and everything was like sloped properties. You couldn't really use it for what we wanted to do. And, um, but Matt kept seeing this house, the California house, he called it online, but he was like, no way we can't move to California. We're Oregonians. No way. And, you know, but every place we went and looked at in Medford, he'd be like, yeah, but it's not the California house. So the California house went off the market and he couldn't find it anymore. All of a sudden comes back on the market, a hundred thousand dollars less than what it was. And it was already cheaper than anything we were finding in Medford. So we went and he was like, what do we do? I said, we go look at it. We go look at it. We walked in. We're like, oh my gosh, yes. Like we'll take it, you know, figure of speech. Not really, but, but we were like loving it. And, um, he goes, what do we do? I said, we put an offer on it. Like this is not going to last. We put an offer on it. And, and if it goes through, then we'll know that that is at least our first, you know, green light. It's at least our first open door. So we'll just walk through it and just kind of see what happens. So he was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer them $5,000 less. I was like, what? That's kind of rude. Like they just, you know, lowered it, at the, you know, $100,000, you know, $5,000 is kind of rude. And he was like, whatever. All they can say is no. So we did it. They said yes. So not only did they lower it like super a lot, but then they said yes to the $5,000 less. So it was like our first green light. And we kept walking through. You know, the next thing they said is, yeah, but your house that you're in right now has to be like on the market or I forgot how you say it, in escrow or whatever by 30 days or else we're going to take this deal off the table. We're like, oh my gosh, okay, well, let's just try it. If it goes through, then that will mean it's, it's, it's an open door. It's a green light. So we did it and it did. It was like 25 days into it or 20 days into it, whatever. It was like up to almost to 30 days. Um, it went into escrow. And so we knew that that was another green light. And we kept doing that as we moved forward. And it was like seamless. Every door we knocked on opened. And so we knew that that was the Lord. And believe me, we were looking for red flags and, and we didn't see any, we didn't see any closed doors. And so that is one of the ways combined with some other things like, you know, um, uh, having mentors around you and people kind of up in your business, like having people that you're accountable to, um, going to them and like asking them for advice, surrendering what it is that you're like going after, um, praying for wisdom, things like that. But also, like I said, watching for the signs, watching for the open or closed doors. And something that is, um, I don't know how many of you are like this, but when I want something, uh, I really want it and I'm super passionate about it. And I tend to be a person who sees a closed door and will karate kick that sucker down, will karate kick it open. And I've done that before in my past and I got exactly what I wanted and it wasn't what God wanted. And so it would fall apart or it wouldn't be right for me. And I have learned to slow myself down a little bit to, to really surrender those things and to knock gently on doors. And so I knock gently on doors and I'm like, does this door wanna open? And if it opens, I'm like, okay, I, I'm gonna walk through this. You know, if I have peace about it, whatever, I'm gonna walk through this. And then I'll like kind of knock on the next door and be like, does it wanna open? If it doesn't wanna open easily, I'm done, I'm out, because I don't want less than God's perfect will for my life. So if it's super duper hard to try to make this relationship work, try to make this business work, try to make this house deal happen, it's probably not God's perfect will for you. So you really need to look at that because you don't want to be 10 years down the road, five years down the road, and people go, did you ever see red flags? And you're like, well, yeah, but you chose to go for it anyways. Well, yeah, well, then that's what you get. Sorry, now I got to dig yourself out of this crazy hole you're in. And so I am currently this week in another one of those times where I recently went to the Lord and I said, I, I've been watching these different like sermons on learning um, the word of knowledge. And so one of the things that the guy was preaching about on his sermon was, ask God for a word of knowledge for your ministry or for your business. Like if you're having a hard time growing in some area and you're, you're not understanding how to do something, ask him for a word of knowledge. So I did. So I went to the Lord and I was like, okay, Lord, you know, I'm always asking you this question. I'm like, how do you get money? I don't know how to get money for our ministry. And we really need money to be able to move forward. I don't know what to do. So Lord, I'm asking for a word of knowledge for, from you for our ministry. And just a couple of days later, he responded and he said, you're waiting for the money to hire the staff. You need to hire staff to get the money. And I was like, 
what? That is, I'm going to say that again because it's so good. <laughs> it's like such a different way of thinking about business. But he said, you, you've been waiting for the money to hire the staff. You need to hire the staff to get the money. And that was like such a different way of looking at things. So I took that word and I started praying about it and asking God to elaborate on that, which he started to. And then I took that word and I took it to a friend of mine who is like a prophetic intercessor. And I brought it to her. She's one of my mentors. And I said, hey, can you pray into this for me? Can you help me like um, discern what's going on here? Blah, blah, blah. I just need, I just need more people around me praying about this. So as I was talking to her, she was like, yeah, totally, I'll pray with you. And she did on that phone call. But at the end, she said, you need to talk to this girl. And she named her name. You need to talk to this girl. And she might fit exactly what it is that you're trying to do. And she happens to be in transition right now. I'm like, okay. So I got on the phone with that girl. And I was getting so excited because I'm like, oh my gosh, she has all these different skills that I need and blah, blah, blah. And so we made up this whole thing like where she was going to come down to my house and stay with me for a few days. So she's actually here with me. She's actually in the other room right now. Um, and we've been spending time together this week. And she's picking my brain. She's getting up in my business. We're finding out, you know, is this going to be a good mix or whatever. Now, the emotional side of me, my flesh side or whatever, wants to be like, let's do this right now. Like, let's like have you move down here. Let's do this thing. And I can go way out there. And yes, I am dreaming like that. But I have to, and it's okay for me to dream like that. But I also need to rein myself back in, which I have. And I need to, I need to watch for the signs. Like, yes, that first door that I knocked on gently opened. And then I knocked on the next door and it opened and it is seeming um, like it's moving forward. And it is, but I also need to use wisdom and I need to use my council of advisors around me and I need to be asking them, hey, what are you guys thinking? How do you think this might fit? Do you think that we can do something like this? And, and I am paying attention to the signs. I'm looking for the green lights and I'm looking for the red lights. I am looking for the open doors. I'm looking for the closed doors. And, and I really want God's perfect will for my life. I am not going to settle for it. I'm not going to settle for it in my life. I'm not going to settle for it in my business. I want God's perfect will. And so I'm willing to wait a little bit longer, even though most of you who know me know I don't like to wait. <laughs> a lot of us don't. You know, I'm, I'm kind of impatient sometimes. But I'm willing to wait and be patient so that I can have exactly what it is that God has for our ministry. And so... You know, that is a good tool for you to use in your current life right now. But as you're moving forward and getting ready to make decisions, whether it's to buy a car, buy a home, get into a relationship, marry that person, take that relationship up a notch, move in with somebody as like a roommate, you know, whatever the situation is, you know, step into somebody else's ministry or start your own. Pay attention to the signs. God is speaking to us in so many different ways. He speaks to us, you know, um, in our heart where we just like have a knowing, you know, he speaks to us in a still small voice. He can speak to us by reading a blog, by listening to a sermon, by reading the word of God or listening to the word of God. He can speak to us in nature. He can give us a word of knowledge like he did to me. It's like he totally answered my question. I'm like, ah, oh, that's such a different way of thinking about things because his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are, are higher than our thoughts. And he knows everything. Like he is sovereign. He is over every Everything. He sees everything. He sees the end from the beginning. He sees it like our whole lives are laid bare before his eyes of the whole world in every single time. Like it's even outside of time. Like he knows everything. And so why not go to him and ask him what he knows? He knows about that person. He knows about that job. He knows about that car. He knows, he knows everything. I mean, I, I had, um, you know, kind of got myself into a situation right before I met Matt where I started like going to date this guy. I never like fully like dated him or anything, but I was like starting like, you know, kind of look at this guy and kind of be interested in all this stuff. And I went to the Lord and I said, this is a way longer conversation that I'll probably do another live video on. But I went to the Lord finally when I swallowed my pride and because um, everyone around me was like, this is not the guy. This is not the guy. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. You know, D don't be with this guy. Don't go forward with this guy. God has somebody better for you. And I was like, whatever. You don't know me. I have, I have a relationship with the Lord. I, I have discernment. I have wisdom. You know, I'm not stupid. You know, it's like, pride, 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 because I wanted what I wanted. And when I finally was like, hey, Lord, tell me about this guy. He said, cut him loose. He's not the one. 
I was like, that, that was probably Satan, or that might have been my own thoughts. Hey, Lord, tell me about this guy. Cut him loose. He's not the one. I heard it three times. Cut him loose. He's not the one. When I finally cut him loose because he was not the one, I met my husband now, Matt, two weeks later. Thank God I did not go that other direction. Thank God I did not settle after all that time of serving Jesus. Like, because now I have this super awesome marriage. Like, I love my husband so much and we're perfectly, you know, equally yoked and we are the best of friends ever. And if I had gone that other way, I don't think I would have started this ministry. I think I would have been backslidden. I think I would not have waited for sex until I got married. Um, and, and I know that for a lot of different reasons because he gave me three dreams about that. But ever, again, I'll, I'll do another video on that some other time. But I want you to know, like, sometimes we're a little slower to be obedient than others. But you got to learn real quick because, you know, we don't have a lot of time left. Like, no matter how old you are, life is short. And, and Jesus is coming back regardless of your age anyways. And so, you know, why not live your days out from this day forward, like, Lord, I'm going to be completely obedient to you, and I am going to pay attention to the ways you speak to me, including those signs of those, of those closed doors and those open doors, including the signs when godly people around me are giving me counsel. I'm going to pay attention to that, and I am going to listen, because I know that that is you speaking to me, and I want what you have for me, and nothing less than that. So I just really want to encourage you, as you're moving forward, try to keep those things in mind. Look for the Lord's answers. Don't just listen. Look for them and see if he has something to say to you. And um, I bet he does. So not just listen to him, but actually do what he says. And then watch how awesome it is to live a blessed life, a life where you're like, I'm totally being obedient to the Lord. This is so awesome. I am literally in his perfect will. So I have all this joy. Even if I'm exhausted from life, I have joy because I know I'm doing, I'm like, I'm in my lane and I am living God's perfect will for my life and loving every second of it. So I want that for you too. So I hope that this helps you moving forward. Um, I'd love to know other ways that you have, you know, seen open doors or closed doors or, or the red light, green light. Is there any other way that the Lord like speaks to you in that way or has spoken to you that you're like, hey, what is that about? Darlene says, he's calling you to take the step before you see the provision. I love it. For you, that is. <laughs> yeah, it is hard being me and taking that. However, it I think it's going to work. I do. I'm like super excited. I had all these ideas. After he said that, I had all of these different ideas that I just started getting flooded with like creativity. So that was pretty cool. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Erica. Hey, Mike. Hey, Lori. Cindy. I think I saw Sherry on there, Amanda, Amy, hi Amy, Heidi, hi Sean, hey Amber watching in the other room, <laughs> hey Bev, hey Kylie, it's good to see you guys all on here, yeah, so I'll, I'll share with you like as I move forward um, through this open door, I want to share with you like what is happening and how I'm handling it. Um, it's easier to talk about something that is in the past. It's kind of harder to talk about something in the present that isn't actually solved yet. Like, I don't have an answer yet. So how do you walk through that stuff when you don't actually have an answer yet? Um, that can be, um, yeah, that can be more difficult because it's that limbo time. It's like, ah, I don't know, but whatever. I just do know that this door opened and I am going to walk through this cautiously, but also really excited about it and very hopeful but cautiously, I'm not going to be um, unwise about it. So I would just encourage you to like do the same in, in areas of your life. Don't just sit and wait for all the green lights. Don't wait for every single thing to line up. Why don't you just knock on that first door and just see if it'll open and just start gradually walking through it. And if the door shut, be like, thank you, Lord, because I know you're probably protecting me. Where was this live eight years ago? Aw, Erica. I don't want to assume what that is, but um, I think I know what that means. Well, 
you are where you're at now. So what can you do differently to kind of change those things? Because the thing is, is that a lot of times when we make huge decisions, like let's just say we marry somebody and it's like, ah, this wasn't God's perfect will for my life. Yeah, but it's, it's his will now. So it's like, Lord, even though I like made that mistake back then or whatever, I wasn't listening or paying attention to those red flags. Lord, I'm asking that you would bless, you know, this mess now and help me know to how to go forward, Lord. And just you know, pray him into that situation. I would just really encourage, you know, any of you who may have, you know, that type of thing. Um, jobs are easier because you can be like, all right, yeah, I need to quit this job and like move on. But if it's a marital situation, well, that's a covenant between the Lord now. So the Lord can do miraculous, amazing things in, in marriages though, even if it wasn't God's perfect will originally. But if you're not married yet, watch those red flags. <laughs> You don't want to step into that covenant with the Lord with all those red flags. Aw. Darlene said, this is really so exciting. I love it for me too when I finally take the first step. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I don't like to be stagnant. I don't know about all of you, but I do not like to be stagnant. I want to, you know, move forward even if it's not technically the right direction i'd rather have a little bit of movement um because stagnant to me that's boring so i'd rather have a little bit of excitement a little bit of like oh i wonder what's happening here um i'd rather like take some chances and take some risks than just sit around and like oh i'm just gonna wait for it to happen like mm. and i don't want to go all the way to like i'm gonna fully make it happen because i really do want like god to get the glory for this um but uh yeah, I, I don't want to just sit around and wait for it either. My sister's calling during this. My sister's coming to this uh, meeting I have tonight, which is really exciting. Yay. Hi, Amy. I love you too. So much. <laughs> Lord bless this mess I am in now. Yeah. Yeah. It can, it can get hard when it's like, oh, I totally made this like choice. I made this mistake. But you know what? praying God into it, getting that accountability around you now where you're currently at in your life. You know, it's crazy. I've seen God turn around some crazy stuff. We literally have two people in our marriage and two people in our ministry who have been divorced from each other and have gotten remarried to each other. Like just in our ministry alone, like I have seen like some crazy things that God has turned around that most people are like, yeah, that thing is dead. That thing is gone. That thing is dead. But the Lord's like, I'm going to make it come alive. So he can do crazy, awesome miracles. He is still a miracle working God. So um, I have got to get over to my meeting here in just a couple of minutes. Yep, it starts in five minutes. And so um, some of you are going to have to watch the replay because he just came on. But it's a good one, so you should watch the replay. If you are up against making any um, big decisions in your life, then I would encourage you to re-watch this and to share it with other people so that, you know, so that they don't get into some of the messes we have gotten ourselves into because we chose not to pay attention. You know, God has amazing, awesome plans for your life, for all of our lives. So why not ask him what it is and why not start knocking on some doors and just kind of seeing if they're going to open. And if they close, let them be closed. Do not kick them down. Um, a lot of times too, when, when doors are closed, that doesn't always mean they're closed forever. It just means it's closed right now. Um, so sometimes you know, occasionally, like in the future, you can go and knock on that door again and be like, hey, is this the time? Like, like I have sent out different letters or different emails to different places trying to like get on like a radio station like K-Love or Air One or something like that. Never heard anything back. Does that mean I'm never going to go on K-Love or I'm never going to go on Air One and, and share my story? No, it just means that that wasn't the right time. So just because it was closed at one point doesn't mean it's always going to be closed. So keep that in mind too. Hey, Destiny, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome to see my sister coming like, ah, Amy, you were such a big part of that. I know you prayed like crazy and you looked for her and all that. And you left the 99 to go after the one and she's here. So anyways, well, I love you all, and I'm excited that you were able to, like, join me on here, and hopefully I'll see some of you in person soon, and I will definitely see you on here next Friday at 530. So I will talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Bye.